Let's talk a little bit about core values. Um, and I want to refer first with uh, many kudos to Pat Lencioni's book, The Advantage. This came out in 2012. Um, got it shortly after it came out and, and just devoured it. And amongst its, it basically it talks about how from a practitioner, a facilitator or consultant standpoint, um, how you go about helping an organization uh, develop the core pieces that it needs from a healthy team to an understanding of, of its, its values and its reason for being to how it is then rolled out through the organization. Anyway, it's a fabulous book. Um, and uh, there's a short section on facilitating core values. In this section, he makes a, he distinguishes between different types of values. Not all values, says Pat, are core values. Some are permission to play. That is, they're the basics that we require of every person entering any organization, like integrity, teamwork, things like that. You know, that if you don't do that, you probably can't work anywhere. So there's the permission to play values. Then he says there are the aspirational values. That is, they're not true or part of our organization right now. They, people wouldn't look at us from the outside and say that that was what drove us. Um, but maybe it's something we want to have, like in uh, prove speed to market or customer responsiveness or something like that. Um, and then there's core values, which represent the deepest urges and, and kind of the inviolable um, uh, standards by which we will govern ourselves and all of our interactions, both internally and externally. So anyway, that's a, a great frame. And yet, two real life experiences uh, that have had called some of that division into question. Um, one was a, a facilitation done with a client several years ago in which they came up with the phrase safety always. Now, if you look at the, sa uh, and they're in the energy space, right? Uh, so safety is kind of expected, they have to have that. Um, so in some ways it would be called a permission to play value, but this worked. As in when this was appropriately rolled out to the organization, the organization got behind it. It was used for what it's supposed to be used for, for making personnel decisions, for, for reinforcing just how we're supposed to be day in and day out. And the organization took a marked turn in its safety performance. Uh, now, Second one, and this one was just a month or so ago, working with a marketing agency. And again, we're facilitating core values. And they came up with something like excellence every time as something that was really important. But then they started questioning themselves. They were familiar with Lencioni's work, and I'd reminded them of the different levels of values. And uh, they said, well, you know, this is aspirational because sometimes we just do cheap stuff. I mean, cheap and on the fly because we have to, but it's okay for the client. So we can't really say it's core that we do excellence every time. So, okay, so I toss that out and then what are we looking for and why? When this particular, as a core value, excellence every time would have been something that would have driven them in the right direction would have really supported where they're going strategy-wise. And so, so both these make me think now, I'm seeing this division into different types of values as something that maybe it's important to understand, but not enforce, at least not as a hard and fast rule. If you think about it, in truth, all values, all core values even, the ones that we really lock in on, are at some level aspirational. That is, if everybody were doing them 100% all of the time, we'd have no need to codify them. So, so we codify them precisely because we want to drive that deeper and deeper into the organization, into all of our interactions with uh, folks internally and externally. Um, when we articulate core values, we're trying to draw a bright line under certain ways of being, under certain behaviors that we believe are crucial to our business. So, so you probably do, if you're, if you're facilitating this or you're on a leadership team that is going through something like this, you probably don't want to chuck those to the side. 
I, I would suggest that permission to play values like safety in certain circumstances are, yeah, that's probably something that you want to consider. Um, you know, aspirational, maybe it's aspirational, like excellence uh, every time. Maybe that's something that you want to consider. The real question, and I think the concern, the, I believe the reason why Pat put this in there is because he doesn't want uh, the core values exercise and the resulting product to turn into this meaningless drivel that, you know, is up on the board somewhere, but really doesn't impact behavior, right? And so that gets to what the real and the only real question is. The only question, whatever you come up with, you come up with a phrase, a short list. Uh, the only question is, are these vital? as in you see them as crucial to your business does it represent something that is crucial to your success will you go to the mattress for it or is it something that just you know is just marketing copy for customers and investors will you commit to the values that you put down uh, whatever their initial source or however you categorize them at the moment. And as a leader, are you going to hold people to account? And are you willing to be held accountable for how you drive this in the organization? If your answer to these questions is yes, then you've identified core values. And now let's just go forward and do the hard work, the good work, of implementing them in the organization and seeing the, the results that come from it.